Hello Flosstube, this is Lori of Mischievous Stitches. I want to welcome everyone to my channel this weekend. I'm very glad that you're here with me. I hope everyone has had a few moments this past week to get a little stitching done, maybe complete a project or to start a new one. Um, this week I've had a few extra moments than normal to stitch. My husband and I drove down to the coast of South Carolina last weekend and um, on the way there and on the way back, I had a few interrupted hours of just stitching. And that time um, enabled me to finish my piece, my ornament that I shared with you last weekend. And that piece is the Santa Factory by Heartstrings, and this is October Santa. So I think I was just starting on his coat. I had a little bit of the moon completed last weekend. I did change the piece up a little bit. If you can see, the, the moon itself is checkerboarded. And so last weekend, I had put some of the framework of that moon in, and like I said, was working on the Santa when I shared him with you. And when I got to the end of it, I went back and decided, you know, was filling in the moon and decided I didn't like that. That I liked it much better without that fill in, that background. And so let me share with you my finish on the October Santa. So here he is. I think he's an adorable little Santa. He's sitting there on the moon after a long night delivering toys. Now the other thing that I deviated from the original pattern was that it called for a Mill Hill teddy bear charm and I left that off. I didn't think it was necessary. He was holding it in his hand um, but I just love the thought of Santa taking a break after a long night sitting on the moon with his foot propped up on the tip. So as you can see, you can see the framework of that moon where I didn't fill it in. I think it just, it just added something special to me to leave that off. And it's not typically the way I stitch. I usually follow a pattern and, and this is one of the first times I've deviated, but I like the result. So I hope you enjoyed seeing that. And then last Sunday, when we got back, I picked up another piece. Let me find my pattern. I shared it with you a couple of weeks ago. I ordered this off of Etsy from Sampler Bird Stitchery. Uh, Robin also has a Instagram under Sampler Bird, and she had posted this on her Instagram, and it's a piece that she designed, and it's Tomato Scissors Fob. So I immediately ordered it as soon as I saw it come in, and last Sunday I gave it a start. I started by stitching the uh, the pincushion attachment there, and um, let me share with you. I'm just going to share it with you. <laughs> this is it. So everything you need is in that. It's a kit, so everything you need is inside with the exception of those scissors. And so I assembled it last night. And it took me a few hours because I've not done something like this, but I, I know since I've got it down pat now, not pat, but I'm a lot better. Um, I know it wouldn't take me near as long next time. So that's the front. So you see a little pin cushion sitting on a, a tomato pin cushion sitting on a spool. And if you look real close down that right hand side, there is a little strawberry emery down below. And then of course you make this tiny little adorable tomato pincushion, and it is filled with walnut crystals. Her instructions were great. Like I said, everything I needed was in the kit. I did, did not run short on threads. Um, I had no problems putting it together, so I want to thank her for such a wonderful, um, well-designed piece, as well as a very well, um, and there's, the instructions were great as well. So um, I will link her Etsy shop below. I don't know if she still has them or she'll still be doing them, that I can't answer, but I will list her below in case anyone is interested. And then of course, there's the back. She gives you two different um, options with the back. One is to have the tomato, one without, um, and then the placement, she gives you an alphabet for your, your initials, as well as um, the, the uh, charting for the year. So there's that. So then, I've been focusing all week when I get off of work or on my lunch break, my Alphabet Zoo. And I shared with everyone last week uh, the great news that I'm gonna be a grandmother. 
So I picked this piece back up and I'm stitching it in a neutral green, a gender, neutral gender, <laughs> neutral gender color of green for this grandbaby. So let me share with you that piece. And this is Alphabet Zoo. So when I saw you last, I think I had the first four squares in this corner and one in the other. So I have completed, completed four squares and a portion of the fifth one. So with that being said, there are a total of 20 squares in this. And I'm thinking it's gonna take me somewhere close to two weeks to get this done. And that's what I'm aiming for, that two weeks. So it's been fun to stitch up those little tiny animals. Um, there's a little bit of over one, like in the eyes, and um, there was a couple of little bugs on there, and that was fun to stitch, but I'm enjoying that piece, and I can't wait to finish it and get it framed and get it ready for baby. So since I've got my bag out, I'm gonna share with you what I have in the stitch bag, and every stitch bag, you know, depending on what you're working on, you're gonna have different items in it. But this one I have in a thread keep, and this one come from um, a Sampler Guild of Georgia retreat in 2019. It was Camp Frog Away. But I have my threads. Now the pattern calls, um, the Alphabet Zoo pattern calls for a red and I'm stitching it in DMC 3363. And I have those threads here. And it's easy because it's monochrome. I usually only use thread keeps when I'm stitching on something that's monochrome. Um, and I just load this thread keep up and uh, pull one thread off or two, whatever I'm needing, just to stitch away. And then, of course, I have my scissors, and my scissors fob on this one. Oop. This is a little wool with little button flowers. And then I have my earbuds. Um, I keep those in there because, like I said, I take this to work. And I just plug my earbuds in to block out the chaos that is work. And I'll listen to a documentary or maybe a podcast um, so that I can focus on my stitching instead of what's going on around me at work. And then I have these attached to my glasses. These are Magna Clips. I bought these last year about this time um, at Stitch and Frame, and that's in Rock Hill, North Carolina, shop there. And I love these. I wasn't sure that I would like them. Let me show them to you. Now, I keep a spare pair of readers. I use readers, and my readers that I buy is at one strength more than what I normally have in the everyday. And because I'm stitching on 40 count most of the time, and on this piece, that is 40 count, 40 count platinum. So I attach them. Here's my readers. They just clip. Can you see that? They clip onto my glasses, and I stitch like this. And then if something comes up or someone comes up and wants to talk to me, I just flip them up and then I have just my regular reader. So um, I really like them. I can see if something happened to these, I would definitely order them again. But this is how I stitch now. Um, I try different things and this is just what works for me. I like that I can pull them off and off, off on and off. Um, I like that they're not there's not much to them, so they're not, they're easy to travel. It, like I said, it comes with a little pouch and then a little protector leather um, pouch here, but I usually just have them stuffed down in my bag with my, my glasses, which need cleaning right now, but um, I thought you might want to see what was in my bag. So I told you Clint and I drove to the coast of Beaufort last weekend and spent the day, and he knows I, that I love to junk. So we did hit a few shops there and a, and a shop or two back, and I only come home with two items. I could have come home with more, but I found a shop in Beaufort that had several needlepoint pieces. Now, I don't needlepoint. I cross-stitch. We all know the difference where most, a lot of people don't. But I, these pieces were priced like the person who had them didn't realize what they had. They didn't needle point and they didn't cross stitch. There were a few pillows, Santa pillows that were needle pointed and there was this huge, when I say huge, I mean long, um, bell pull that was needle pointed and I just didn't want to pay the cost for that one even though it should have been, it should have been priced more. Um, I've been kicking myself in the bottom 
since I left, honestly. But I did pick up two small pieces, um, and I want to share those with you. So I'm going to, here they are. They're both needlepoint, and they're door hangers. So this is Welcome, and it has the Hospitality Pineapple there. And I just, when I come home, I put this right on my stitch room door. I just love it. I love the colors. Now, what if I'm up here and I'm really in the zone or I have a piece that I need to finish and I don't need to be interrupt interrupted? That's where the next piece comes in. <laughs> this is Do Not Disturb. So they were eight bucks a piece. Let that sink in. Eight bucks. So you can see the person finished it themselves a piece of velvet on both of them. Mat boarding inside. No could no um, batting on this one, but there's batting beneath this one. This is the one, even though I could have, you know, I wish there was some other wording here. Um, I love this border. I love those shades of pinks and reds. I think they're beautiful, but they're on the doorknob of my stitch room. I knew that I could put them to good use, and so I picked them up. I hope you enjoyed seeing those. The other thing is I got a gift, um, oh, and I've missed, there he is. I wanted the business card. So this is by Tammy, and she is Stick Horse Designs. You can find her on Etsy. There's all the information. I'll try to list this below too. And I got this little pouch, this little zippered pouch. It has a zipper on the top. Is it on the top? Hold on, let me take it out. Yeah, on the top. And then it, it has a lobster clasp here. The best part about it is my name. Is it machine embroidered there? I love it. Thank you so much, Tammy. Now, let's get to what's in my basket. Last weekend, I told you I would share with you what I have in my basket. And these are things that I started kidding or preparing. Not all of them have fabric. Not all of them have the threads because I have plenty of threads here. Um, but these are things that I was thinking this year would be a year of smalls, and it didn't work out like that. I'm going to call this my red letter year or my red letter Christmas year because I want to work on... Um, ornaments, finishing them, stitching them, but I do want to do a few red samplers again. Um, and maybe one day soon I'll share with you uh, what red samplers I have or what red samplers I have and which ones I've finished. But today we're going to go through this basket real quick. So right on top, I have a couple of prairie schoolers. We all love the prairie schoolers, but um, this is an, an old one. And I plan on changing this one. The quilt squares will be Christmas colors. And I have some of the fabrics. And then I have the Santa. I think I showed this last week. This is the Santa for 2022. Not crazy about that neon color in the lights. And I'll probably change that. But I'm not sure um, what colors or anything yet. So we'll wait to see. But this will probably be, one of these will be the next one that I, that I start. And I plan on plugging these little ornaments in, in between my bigger pieces. So I'm going to continue to work on my whips too. So ba basically I'm just going to have a stitch field year. I'm going to finish some whips and I'm going to do some red samplers and I'm going to finish some ornaments. So, <laughs> but what do I have? I'm going to pull all these kitted pieces out. The first one I've got in here, I have no fabric, no threads with this one, but this is Kind Words by Primrose Cottage Stitches, and it says, Kind words are like honey. They're sweet to the soul. And then this one is... Abby Rose Designs. Um, this one is Primitive Merry Christmas Pillow. I've seen a lot of people stitch this one. I love it on the darker fabrics, and I chose this fabric and ordered it off of one, two, three, but I think it's way too dark for this. 
So I will have to switch out fabrics. And I have all my pieces in these pouches. I bought a pack of these pouches off of Amazon last year. And this is what I was using to kit these up into. Um, and I'll have those listed below too if you're interested in those. They're very inexpensive. I think I got, I don't know, 12, 14, 16 in a pack um, for what I felt was very not much money at all. Okay, and then this one, this one was a gift. It's a strawberry, it's woodland berry, and this is a kit. So everything I need is inside the fabric, the threads, everything, and I'm not gonna open that up to show them, but um, there's that one. And I've not finished one of those strawberries. I think Erica Michaels has done several of them, and that's who the designer is. And I've not stitched any yet, so I'm looking forward to that one. And here's another heartstring Santa. I have the threads. Let me pull them out so you can see them. I love those colors. Very 90s colors. And this is the Santa Gathering, and this is, I think, number two. Yeah, number two Santa. And then again, there's a little button just another company button instead of a charm this time. And I love the colors on him, so I went ahead and bought the, bought the threads for him. And this is Threadwork Primitives. American Eagle. And here's the fabric. Now a lot of times what I'll do is, I did the same thing with Ann Womack, is I had more fabric than I needed for the piece. So when I pretty much had the border of and completed, I measured out three inches and cut the bottom half off. And so that is the fabric that I'm gonna use for my next red sampler, which I've chosen. And that's some, I keep this basket down beside me. So when I cut these scraps off, I put them in, lay them across the top, or go ahead and put them in one of these pouches with a piece I know that will fit onto that. That way I'm not wasting uh, my fabric and not buying new pieces when I don't need them. What else do we have? We have another Threadwork Primitives and this is Quaker Bird Pinwheel. I can't wait to pull the colors on this one. I have the fabric but I don't have the, the threads and that it it looks like shades of pink and salmon and peach and the greens. In my mind's eye, I think the, the threads are gonna be gorgeous. So I look forward to pulling those. And it does me good because doing this because I forget what's in here. This may be one of the top ones that I wanna finish right here. I just love those colors. And then my favorite designer, Lori of Lottie Da. I don't know why I haven't stitched this one up either. This is the Merry Christmas, a Merry Christmas sampler. And I have the threads, not the threads. I'm showing you the fabric and I say the threads. But I love this one. I've seen several people stitch this one too and it's gorgeous. But most everything Lori does is gorgeous. Lori the designer, not this Lori. Okay. And then this one is a little house. And this is, I think it's cocoa. Hot chocolate. So I have the piece and I have the threads. I loved that, that series too. She does a great job on her Christmas ornaments. And then this one, I've seen a lot of people stitch this one too. This is a hands-on design. Comes with fabric, and this is Pumpkin Spice Farm. See, these aren't going to take long, a few days to finish. And they're just a great little in-between piece between the big ones to give me a break from the big ones. And this is Poinsettia House by Little House again. And I did see, and I think it was Vanna at one time years ago, she stitched these just the tree here for her daughters for a Christmas ornament, which I thought was such a cool idea. So there's that one, no thread, 
and no fabric. And then another one is a Scarlet House. This one reminds me of my childhood in the late 70s, early 80s. My mother it would decorate for, for Halloween and we had these, they were just paper. They were a hard paper and they were um, decorations that we would hang on our front door or around the house. And it was these colors and I remember the black, one of them was a um, haunted house and the background was black and it was velvet. And this is why I bought this one. It reminds me of those designs. So there's that one. And then, I have, Taking it out of the, the piece. It's um, Sampler Stocking or Ornament by Abby Rose Designs. I've taken it out of the bag. I need to put that back in. And then I have fabric for that one as well. Light Mocha Bell Fast. That's a big piece. I can do several on that piece. And then I have... Oh, I thought this one was so cute. This is the guest house. Um, this is by Bent Creek Designs. And there's a, there's a stack of these. It's like three or four of them. And you can stack one up. You can do one big piece or you can do the individuals. And it makes it like a haunted house. And I think he's up in the attic. But I just love the mad scientist. So I got him. And that's it, that's what I've got in here. And I have, I'm sure I have others, but these are the ones I happen to have right beside me. Um, here's a couple more, hold on. I do have a couple more in here. I have an ABC Pins and Me Tomato by With Thy Needle and Thread. It's a kit that I bought last year. And then this is a Shepherd's Bush. Now, this isn't a small ornament, but I had put this in here because I looked for it. I couldn't find it last year. I was going to stitch this with a friend here on Floss Tube, and she had the same one. She loves Shepherd's Bush, and I knew I had it, and I could not find it, and she whipped hers out really fit fast, and I finally found it, so I stuck it down here to work on this year. But like I said, that's it. That's everything I've got down here beside me. Um, thanks for visiting today with me. I hope you enjoyed your time here. And until next week, keep on stitching. See you later. Bye-bye.